If I turn off the ultraviolet light, this crystal will strangely glow. In fact, this crystal will glow for a lengthy period of time, acting as a portable light source that emits a color of cyan. What you are observing is an extreme example of a fascinating mineralogical phenomena referred to as phosphorescence. In this case, the glowing material is composed of the compound known as strontium aluminate. Strontium aluminate has the following chemical formula with the element europium often substituting in place of the strontium atom. Strontium aluminate is so phosphorescent that simply bringing the specimen outside in sunlight during a UV index of 6 for 30 seconds caused it to immensely glow thereafter and continue to glow at a lesser extent two hours after the initial exposure to sunlight. While strontium aluminate is man-made, there are a number of natural compounds and minerals which are phosphorescent to a lesser extent, such as this piece of the Cliche aka calcium carbonate from Arizona, or this piece of magnesite aka magnesium carbonate which glows as a white color after the UV light I used to trigger the reaction was turned off. For each of these three compounds, a different ion triggered the phosphorescence. In the cliche, while a combination of several compounds was a trigger, I can isolate dysprosium 3 plus as one example. In the magnesite, manganese 2 plus was the trigger, while in strontium aluminate, europium 2 plus was the trigger. So, why did these compounds produce phosphorescence? First, I want to remind my audience what the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence is. From a visual perspective, fluorescence only occurs when the energy source, generally in ultraviolet light, is powered on. Once the light is turned off, the glowing color immediately disappears in a fluorescing compound. In comparison, a phosphorescent compound will continue to glow for a period of time after the energy source has been turned off. Light has a variable wavelength with visible light representing an area in the middle of the pack. During both fluorescence and phosphorescence, a higher energy, shorter wavelength of light goes into a compound which then causes a reaction that releases a lower energy, longer wavelength of light. In the examples I've provided so far, ultraviolet light is going in and visible light is coming out. In the case of a fluorescent compound such as the mineral fluorite, an ion is needed that can trigger a fluorescent reaction, which in the case of fluorite is europium 2 plus. When ultraviolet light hits electrons orbiting the atom's nucleus, it can excite them, causing them to temporarily jump to a higher orbital state. However, the electrons are unstable there and immediately jump back down to their original orbit, releasing energy via a photon of visible light in response to this return to normal. The amount of energy released determines the wavelength of light created, causing a rock to glow differing colors depending on what it is composed of. In comparison, during phosphorescence something similar occurs as ultraviolet light hits electrons orbiting the atom's nucleus, causing them to become excited. These electrons then jump to a higher orbital state, but unlike during fluorescence, some electrons have their electron spin direction completely flipped. In this flipped spin state, they are stable for a period of time, meaning the ultraviolet light could be turned off at this stage in the reaction and the subsequent steps would not change. At fairly random intervals, individual electrons will suddenly flip back to their original spin state, causing them to immediately jump to their original orbit, releasing a photon of light. This process can occur for seconds, minutes, hours, and in rare cases, days, causing a decreasing amount of light to be released over time. If you are wondering how europium 2 plus is the cause of these reactions in both fluorite and strontium aluminate despite not technically comprising their chemical formula, this is how. Atoms, depending on the element and their oxidation state, have a wide range of ionic radii. Because of this, differing elements can sometimes substitute in place of another atom if their charge and radii is about the same during the creation of a mineral or compound. For this to occur, the ionic radii needs to be within 15% the ionic radius of the atom it is replacing, along with being the same oxidation state or plus or minus one oxidation state of the atom being replaced. Since europium 2 plus has the same oxidation state as both calcium 2 plus and strontium 2 plus and is within 15% the radii of these two ions, it can sometimes replace them. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Joaquin Durand for supporting this channel.